Are you smart enough to study mathematics? Do you have what it takes? You know, it's, it's tough. It really is. I, I just got off the phone with a really good friend of mine and his little brother, who's younger than he is, was in my class, actually, a few years ago, a differential equations class. And he did awesome. He did great. I mean, I remember grading his tests, super smart. Apparently, he wasn't even 18 years old when he took my class, so he was in differential equations with me. He got an A, and he was under 18, which is very, very rare. I've had that happen in the past. I've, I've taught classes where you get these high school students who are super, super good. Usually, by the way, uh, just so you know, if you're in a class and there's high school students in that class, they're usually extremely good at mathematics. So here's the interesting part. Here's where this conversation is going. So this, this guy, my friend's little brother, he went to a pretty good school. Pretty good. Not like, you know, top 10, but it's up there. And he took advanced calculus, which I actually have a book here. So this stuff, advanced calculus, a course in mathematical analysis. It's also called... Uh, real analysis. So he, he took this class, a, a class that uses a book like this, and he got an A. And then he changed his major. He decided math is not for him, which is really interesting because <laughs> that's usually not how it works, right? Most people who take real analysis and get an A, they stay in it. But according to my friend, he said that his little brother said, oh, it's, it's just too hard. Uh, it's, it's just too hard. I don't want to study math. And I thought, wow. So instead, uh, he's studying statistics and economics, which is a double major, right? What a powerhouse. Ah, this guy's going to be, he's going to accomplish big things someday, right? Really impressive. So you, you, you look at people like this, and then, and then you look at yourself, and then you do something which I think you can do it, but it can be dangerous, you compare yourself. You know, if, if I compare myself to my friend's little brother, when I was 17, all I cared about was learning to drive a stick shift and, yeah, playing basketball with my friends. I mean, I didn't care about math or college or any of that. I had no interest. So his life is very different from mine. And comparing his life to mine, this kid is light years ahead of me, right? I didn't start college until I was 24, right? 24. But some people are doctors by the time they're 24, right? So I got a late start. Keep that in mind, by the way. It's never too late, right? If you're 50, 60, 70, it's never too late to start. So when you compare yourself to people like that, you just have to be careful. You don't feel bad. So are you smart enough to study math? Well, you might not be as smart as this guy. Right? You might not be as naturally gifted as he is, but you can certainly catch up to him. I, I do believe that. I, I definitely believe it. I've worked with people who are smarter than me. I've, I've sat down and done homework with another person who was definitely better, at me, better than me at math. Like This guy was so much better than I was. He would sit down. I remember one time he sat down in the library we were in the math library and we started on the problems and we had certain homework problems. It was like one, two, three. I think we had to skip number four then five. It's funny. I remember. And we both started working alone. I was on number two. He was already like on seven or eight. I was like, Oh, you already did those. He's like, yeah. I was like, do you want to see what I did? And I'm like, uh, sure. Uh, I just, just so much faster. Right. Brilliant. Brilliant. Turns out he decided not to continue studying mathematics either, right? His reason was he liked math, but he liked doing lots of other stuff too. That's what he said to me. And that, that to me was a big statement because he was so good at math. So when you see someone who's better than you, you know, abandon than mathematics or, or this other guy, my friend's little brother, getting an A in real analysis and abandoning mathematics, you might be asking, well, hey, I'm not even that good at math. Why should I even try. I think you should do it because you like it and it's because it's something you want to do. 
whenever you're trying to be the best in the world at something, it's, it's really hard and it might not happen, right? And so when you compare yourself to people like my friend's little brother or my friend who I studied with who was much better than me, you, it's, it's kind of like, it, may, it can make you feel like you're defeated. It can make you feel like you're not good enough. And that is not a productive feeling at all. That feeling brings nothing but negative thoughts to your mind, right? You should do something because you enjoy it. I, uh, I interviewed uh, a great mathematician and a great author. Uh, his name was Thomas Garrity. I was. He's still alive, I'm sure. He, he's a teacher. Um, and great man. I, I really love his book. I, I don't have it here. I, I do have it here, but that's another video. In any case, in his interview, he said to me, he does mathematics because it brings him joy. And I think that's a good reason to study anything. You should study what you want to study, you know. So, you know, if you're thinking about, like, doing math and you're thinking you're not smart enough, hey, try it, right? At the same time, I do believe in the principle of using what you have. And this is just something that I've created for myself in my own life. I feel that every person, every individual has something. And sometimes you look at people... And it's really hard to find that thing, but I like to believe that they have something, right? But for most people, you know, barring mental issues and stuff, you can see some potential in them. Maybe they're very athletic. They're naturally strong. They have big muscles. Maybe they're very charismatic. Maybe they're extremely good looking. Um, maybe they're very good at mathematics. Maybe they're very good writers. Maybe they have good um, presentation skills, right? Everyone is different, and I think we all have something. So try to use what you have as well. So yeah, so try to think about that as well. Think, take that with you from this video as well. You know, think about should you be doing math? Do you love math? Do you like math? And what do you have, and what can you use in this world to get ahead and survive? Right. So yeah, if you think you're not smart enough to study math, well. I was going to say, you probably aren't, uh, but that's a really bad thing to say. I don't think anyone is, right? I don't think anyone's smarter. It's hard, right? It's, math is hard for everyone, right? Even, even math professors, I mean, they're just people, right? They've just been doing it a long time. And the longer you do it, the better you get at it. It's like reading math books, you know? The longer you stare at a math book, the more math books you read, the more math problems you do, even if you don't understand all of it, it eventually all starts to come together and you start to pick up little pieces and stuff and... Yeah, you, get, you, build, you build a stronger understanding. Yeah, so that's my take on it. I think it's hard for everyone, and you should do it if you love it. What do you think about mathematics and IQ and studying? Do you have any thoughts? If you do, leave a comment in the comment section below. Remember, whenever you leave comments, it helps other people, and people read the comments. Also, if you want to learn math, I actually do have courses. They're on Udemy, but if you get them, Please use the links from my website because I've lowered the prices and it helps me greatly. And if you want to subscribe, go for it. Just hit the subscribe button. Key takeaway from this video is, you know, are you smart enough to do math? Is your IQ good enough? Are you good enough to do it? The answer only depends on you. And let me just end the video with this. I've seen people who, and this is... Really, it's not my place to say this, so I never did say it, but I, I, I had students in the past who were extremely good at things, but they were studying other things, and I always thought that was weird. Like, I had a student once who I always thought would be really good at X, Y, Z, but they were studying something else, and I never really understood it, you know? Um, but people make decisions, and, you know, you live with your choices, so choose wisely. If, if you like mathematics and you're okay with the job prospects that it brings, which basically means teaching or working somewhere, you know, with a bachelor's degree, you can get a job in most places. Then it's about, you know, what do you know? Do you have the skills for the job? But as long as you have a bachelor's in something, you can usually get a job, All right? Teaching is something unique though, or fairly unique that you can do with, with a math degree. So that's kind of cool. So think about those things and make the decision for yourself. And at the end of the day, 
if you choose something you really like, you can't go wrong. I know it's cliche, you know, do what you love. People always say it's cliche and then they end up in jobs they hate. Yeah, people have all kinds of opinions and I do think you should do something that makes you happy because it's your time, right? You only have so much time on this earth, right? Make it count, right? Do something you like. And if you like math, go do some math. Take care.